And uh, most importantly, we would like to have world peace and to establish world peace. And before I um, deliver my keynote speech, I would like to first introduce to you a person with whom I met uh, four years ago. He flew into Moscow specifically to meet with us. His name is Anatoly Skargin. And uh, he's a general, and he is the head of the Association Generals of the World for Peace. And you know, usually um, when you hear the word general, you think it's a person who enjoys war, you know, like a war junkie. But it turns out um, there are very few generals who enjoy war because um, war is all is about winning or, lo or losing, you know. And usually it is not the... Um, people who initiated the war or fought the war to suffer. There are other uh, like civilians who suffer most. And generals very often have also have to deal with the consequences. And mo many of them are actually peace-loving people. And uh, last year we signed a, an agreement with the Generals of the World for Peace Association. Now we closely cooperate with each other. And that's why I would like to now give the floor to Anatoly for him to address you. So, dear brothers and sisters, this is sound check. Now the sound is good. So I will always address you as brothers and sisters and my family members. I'll explain you why. First of all, I would like to thank you Andre and your entire team for the opportunity to speak at your international webinar. First of all, I would like to prove, prove that peace is the most important thing in our world. Just think about this. When people meet, let's say when uh, in the biblical time, people met each other and they met each other with the words peace to your home or peace to your house. And uh, the Muslims of the world, and uh, they meet each other with the words assalamu alaikum, which means, means peace upon you. So do not really say like, I wish you a million dollars. They wish peace and health. And they focus on peace because nice Peace is the core of everything. Without peace, there won't be no there won't, won't be any business. Without peace, there won't be any health. That's why the generals of the world for peace decided to go for peace and to focus on peace. That's why we are called the generals of the world for peace. Let me explain you the origin of our. Uh, name because not everyone attended the webinars where where we usually explain that well generals are people who are most interested in peace because a conflict is about two warring sides and the losing sides are the victim side usually generals of the other losing side are arrested or even shot like Yugoslavia Syria Kyrgyzstan they were cases uh, when we were involved in the internal conflicts and generals were arrested and are still arrested. Therefore, generals are people who are most interested in peace. Well, I know that we all want and love peace, but I think peace is... Um, has some extra meaning to generals because generals they are parents uh, and uh, brothers and uh, sons of some of other people as well and moreover they know the destructive power of the modern weapons you know they know that the previous world wars were wars being destructive as they were like millions of people died uh, many generals realize that the current weaponry, the current, current arms are capable of ensuring total annihilation of all life on the planet. And let me ask you this question. 
how many how much money do you think is spent on weapons every year and the money is the amount is two trillion dollars that's how much money was spent in 2019 for the production of weapons can you imagine and just to, for you to compare the budget of the most of the richest country in Europe, Germany, with the highest living standards, Germany, the budget of Germany is $356 billion and 400 million euros, I'm sorry. Just imagine two trillion against hardly half a billion, half a trillion. So imagine we took all that money and spend it on the prosperity of people. And when we were, let, let's go back into the history of our association. When the idea was born to set up this organization. And I, I remember myself when I was a child, even when I was four years old, I um, had this acute sense of justice, you know. I went to study in the police school and I thought if I become a policeman, I will catch all the thieves and all the criminals and I will help uh, my country become a better place. And then the Soviet Union collapsed and it was a tragedy for me because everything collapsed with it. My profession collapsed as many other people who wore uniform. But most importantly, everything that we did everything that we did professionally. You know, in many countries in the 1990s, the power was seized by bandits. There were lots of, uh, you know, um, assassinations. Bankers, businessmen were assassinating because uh, there were lots of criminal wars and there were lots of different uh, biographical books about the those times in the early 90s, 1990s, where businessmen and bankers were, you know, they were, they had to pay tributes to the mobsters, to the mafia. But sooner, but gradually, you know, the society evolved and the mobsters became a part of the history. But still, we haven't yet achieved the uh, living standards of uh, what we had back in the USSR, for example, or the criminal cr crime rate. In Kyrgyzstan, if uh, back in the day we had two robberies per year, it was already a tragedy. Currently, robberies are things happening very often, you know. And I remember uh, when I was young, guys uh, used to fight each other, you know, it was fist fighting. Uh, never used knives or ne never used sticks. Gradually knives appeared, knives, and then firearms are used in the street fights. Sometimes they even use grenade launchers or grenades. And let alone the terrorism, you know, the, which usually serves some political goals. Because I remember in the early 1990s they used to throw grenades under the carriage of the russian king tsar and it was called terrorism back then now terrorism took a completely new form entire nations entire countries are wiped out and who is the first to suffer children women and the idea behind our association was to create a platform which would convene, which would be a place um, where non-indifferent people would convene. And there are lots of such people in the planet. So, for example, let's take a woman. A woman carries a, a uh, fetus, a baby, for nine years under her heart, in her belly, and then raises that baby for 18 years for the baby to be taken into someone else's war and be killed potentially there. Just a waste of life. And that's why I decided to work with Andre because I realized his mission, the importance of his mission, which is to bring peace and to bring and the, to build 
the new economic evolution of the world. As a famous Chinese businessman said, if you want to build a huge business, put huge social programs in the first place. And I really admire the idea of our train operator as Manuel called him, who decided to create this huge social program to change, to help our world evolve. Because when we do away with poverty, when we do away with hunger, of course, we will be closer to the time when wars can be avo avoided if we unite and we have such a platform. And when we created our platform, the first thing that I decided to tackle was to receive the uh, blessing from all the churches and all the religions. We received written blessings from uh, the heads of Islam, Catholic religion, Orthodox religion, um, from the uh, heads of the Jewish uh, religion, you know, and the Buddhist religion. And, you know, usually they say, go into the world, my son, I bless you. And I told him, no, I don't want your verbal blessing. I need your written blessing. And they told me, in this case, we must pray and we must, must ask God, Allah. And if they agree, then we will give you the written blessing. And that's how we obtained the written blessings of the main confessions, main religions. Of course, there are many religions of the world, but we're talking about the mainstream religions, the most prominent religions in the planet. And if you find a religion that we haven't yet gotten the written blessing from, tell me about it. And I will go to the main uh, head of their religion and I will ask for, the, for their written blessing because there is only one God and that God wants to wishes goods, good stuff and, you know, peace for all of us. 80% of people, are, and maybe more, someone says 90, someone says 80% on the planet are part of this religion or another, are believers. But if all the religions blessed us, then who is against us? This is my question number one. If all the women across the world are for us, then who is against us? Because I never heard a woman say that I carried my baby for nine months in my belly and then raised him for 18 years and now I'm ready to sacrifice my son for someone else's war. I never met such a woman. In Kyrgyzstan, I uh, got the assurance of all the political parties because in the, our charter, we say that we cannot support any political agenda, any political party, because political parties, their goal is to seize power. And I like uh, how the train of thought of our train operator, Andre, he said, we are not competitors to the powers that be. We are not competitors to large corporations. We are their helpers. Just think about the depth of those words and how well they describe they are, um, our idea. The world is at the verge of collapse. Just take a look what's happening in the United States, in France. It's literally, the United States now have like a civil war going on. But the separation, the divide between the poor and the rich is so big that today the rich have come to a point when they don't know what to do with the poor anymore. People who have no money even to feed themselves. And we have a way out, new, new economic evolution of the world. We have lots of different examples. I know a, different, a good example in India, there was a person who sold different trinkets, you know, and um, used to sell different trinkets. And now he's a uh, average businessman and has an income of several dozens of thousands of dollars. And this is a good example of a new solving the problems of, uh, you know, low and middle class uh, people. I remember attending a webinar, a seminar workshop in Minsk, and I saw a lady, she was 70 or 80 years old from Italy, and she said, 
I am so humble and shy. I have always had this uh, stage fright, but now I have um, my monthly income of several thousand dollars. And previously it was hardly several hundred euros. And imagine that we have no poor whatsoever. It's going to be also a safety line for the rich as well. They won't have to deal with the rich anymore, with the poor anymore. Uh, you must have heard about this guy called Lenin. And he said that, that if you want to have a revolution, you have to rely on the um, proletarians, proles, because they have nothing to lose. And revolution is about destruction. Destruction of lives, destruction of property, and we don't want that. We don't need revolution. We need evolution, evolutionary approach. We need to build a new world by evolution, by education, because only education people will never become terrorists. Only educated people will be able to multiply their budget. And for this purpose, you signed an agreement with the Academy of Private Investor. As the Academy provides education to people to become qualified and in a legal way to make their money, but not by being gangsters. And I'd like to note one important thing. Today, our time has come because I can actually, I, I have limited time and can only briefly give you an overview what we are doing. Our time has come, why? Not because before actually there were no such smart guys as Mr. Skargin. Our time came because new technologies emerged. Without these new communication technologies, we could not imagine the chance of this program. A good example, this webinar. Over 50 countries take part in this conference. And there is simultaneous interpretation provided in nine languages. And over 1.6 million, 1.5 million people actually signed up to this program. And today we are blessed to benefit the ICT and seize terrorism and war. How can we do it? For this, we will provide trainings, some courses, some national sections or sessions. In New Delhi, we awarded with our medal 20 leaders. For what? Because they have prepared heads of the future sessions. And Andrei Havratov actually proposed to award these leaders with our rewards, the DAF of peace. And actually then uh, this movement will only become an addition to our new economic evolution of the world. Another part actually took place in Almata and after the speech, I felt to be Yuri Gagarin. And people didn't let me go away. So they wanted to take pictures with me and get my autograph. But it can happen to all of you in your countries because people miss Pete. They need peace. They need friendship. They uh, get rid of fears and scares. And instead of dozens, millions, actually, so in many countries, what they face, actually, they face war, terrorism. They were resettled from their countries to foreign countries with faked passports and IDs. Can you imagine what state it is? We observe this being indifferent. Yes. You may feel that it's indifferent, but when there was the national conflict be begin between Uzbeks and uh, Kyrgyz, and when hundreds of people migrated to Uzbekistan, and there were hundreds of calamities in these conflicts, 
and this conflict stirred around in waves along the um, the planet and therefore Man Martin Luther King he said so you will actually face all the troubles as soon as you bend your uh, backs so actually if you bend your backs no one will stable you and now this is actually a different level it's not the warfare when two corps meet each other in the military field and kill each other today the power the most powerful understand as soon as there is the nuclear for war no one will survive secondly it's important to understand that war is of different nature today talking to different academia scientists who join our project generals of the world's generals for peace so they'd like to share their findings their developments to prevent this terror an example of the pandemic and now a dozen of the scientists well-known scientists actually prove that this is an artificially made disease to create chaos in the world on the one hand it's bad but on the other hand can't chaos is an evolution taking place on the planet you may have heard that there is such a term the earth vibration i'd like to take a few other minutes to tell you why it's important vibrations of the earth within a number of years starting from 2000 to 2017 actually increased uh, for, uh increased to 36 hertz before in centuries thousands of years the earth was sleeping but now there is this skyrocket growth in the vibrations of the earth and each person each human being is full of energy and the planets of human beings are not interrelated by interact with each other and are viewed as one common being and in this regard i'd like to tell you that our vibrations in human beings increase as well uh, because of grievance because of some scare scares uh, so when you are irritated 0 0.6 hertz when you are too proud 0, 0 0.8 hertz and when our vibrations go up they go actually they when you are in harmony with your surrounding and Andrei Havratov actually made the evolution of the world. When you feel mercy, an increase is 125 hertz. And most important is love. Love to the universe, 200 and, two, two, sorry, uh, 205 hertz. And then you may ask me a, faction, a, a question. Why are you talking about the vibrations of a human being and the universe? I'm saying this in case there is a balance then we are destined to success before actually when the material and the spiritual were enemies actually they it was a natural state because on the planet low vibrations dominated but do you realize in case they increase what will happen now at present so these vibrations of these greedy people and their time is over the universe increases its vibrations and the rule of games called life and the older methods do not match did you watch it i said this in one of the videos but maybe you didn't actually watch it because not everyone is engaged in self-development in self-growth and andrei havratov always instructs you uh, tell to your beloved i loved you i love myself i i love our planet i love our nature i love our planet because love increases vibrations uh, teresa mother said to 
overcome grievance and evil, we need love and mercy. And in my short speech, I tried actually to say that the time has come for us, dear friends, and only those people will become successful, will be abundant, will be well off, will be health, who manage to increase their vibration level. And it is possible only through love. It's possible only through the relations, good, kind relations between mankind. And this is actually the team which is being shaped here in the new program. And I'd like to say gratitude to Mara from Italy, the head of the ethics department. I call her as my sister. She allowed me to do it because actually we spent a lot of time together with her to make a video in Italian, a call to the people on the planet Earth. And I'd like to show you a picture of our spaceman. He is the hero of Russia and he carries our flag. Not all the NGO and actually almost no NGO managed to send or companies managed to send their flags to the space. But we did it. Why? Because there is belief there is a goal we pursue. And a few other, so I've actually shared some pictures. And this is a picture of myself with the Minister of Defense. He is the hero of, of the Soviet Union of Mongolia. He is a spaceman who welcomed us in Mongolia. And he was encouraged to accept our idea to join for the sake of the peace on this world, in this world. And this is a flag presented by spaceman Sharipov after the trip to outer space, the hero of the, of the Russian Federation of Kyrgyzstan, of Uzbekistan, and a hero of our organization. He brought this flag. And many people actually said it won't be possible. No one will do it because the value of the trip of the flag to the outer space is 60,000 euro. Where can we get this amount? But I said with confidence that it will be in the space. And therefore, please, I encourage you to set ambitious goals, ambitious dreams, big dreams like our organization together with Andrei Havratov, we set these goals when we signed an agreement, our first meeting in Moscow, where we both realized that only by uniting our efforts, we will get successes and victories only when we are together. And actually in the end of my speech, in conclusion, I'd like to tell you the following. Dear friends, this is the time we are to open national sessions, sections. Today, India, in a short interview at your webinar, at your webinar, you heard that India has almost finalized the preparation for the national section. Actually, I thought that we would congratulate this country, but from the Ministry of Justice, I received a package of documents as a confirmation that the Ministry of Justice approved the title of the national section, which is called National Section India. And this is like an authorization for the registration of this section in India. And I'm hopeful that quite soon it will be there. And uh, quite soon you will see that the speed will grow up and with incredible vi victories, we will progress forward to change the situation as the time, our time has come. Thanks a lot for your attention. And I believe that quite soon our association will run our own webinars separately and we will train the people how to reach the level of vibration 
which will make all the participants of the new program sound healthy and wealthy. And once again, my thanks to our leader, Andrei Havratov, for this chance to speak in front of you, dear friends. Thank you very much.